praise God. Pastor of the church and other servants of God, brothers and sisters, kids, I greet each one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As Pastor said, um, I'm also standing with mixed emotions. Last uh, six years, we were together. We had a wonderful fellowship in this church. Thank you, church. Thank you, pastor and family. Thank you, church, for your prayers and love for us. We will continue to pray for you. And we will we together will uphold each other in prayer. May God bless this church and bring this church to a new level. May God bless you all. A portion God has given me to speak today is Acts chapter 7 verse 17 through 22. Acts of Apostles, chapter 7, verse 17 through 22. One of you can read that. And when the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose who did not know Joseph. And this man dealt treacherously with other people, with our people, and oppressed our forefathers, making them expose their babies so that they might not live. At this time, Moses was born and was well pleasing to God and he was brought up in his father's house for three months. But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. Thank you for reading. I have spoken many sermons, notably here, many places from Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7 is the speech of Stephen. We can even say the last uh, speech, the last sermon made by Stephen. So regarding the preacher, we read uh, in chapter 6, Verse 8, and Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then because of that, so filled with the spirit, filled with the power, Stephen was doing many wonders and signs. And because of that, people, the religious leaders targeted him. That is what we read in verse 9 towards the end, rose up and disputed with Stephen. But in verse 10 we read, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. So this is a small introduction about the preacher. He was filled with the spirit. And because of that, he was so wise. The people who targeted him could not withstand his wisdom. Then verse 11 we read, Then they secretly instigated men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. So this was the allegation against Moses that he spoke against uh, the temple and also against Moses, the great leader of Israelites, the law giver. So in and through the speech he made in chapter 7, Stephen was speaking about a spirituality that is outside of the church, outside of the temple. We need to understand that Jewish people, the Israelites, they were, their spirituality was 
very much temple focus. But Stephen was speaking about, through his sermon, he was speaking about a spirituality that was outside the temple. And even before that existed, even before the temple was built. And even before the law was given. So he begins his speech with Abraham. What is the significance of Abraham? The salvation history begins with Abraham. God calling one man. We know the story of Abraham. Stephen begins his speech, his sermon with Abraham. So how he begins, Stephen begins this way. The beginning verses of chapter 7. Brothers and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia. So God called Abraham, not when he was in the promised land, not when he was in Palestine, but where was Abraham? Abraham was in Mesopotamia, the land between two rivers, Euphrates and Tigris. And God, the God of glory, called Abraham from Mesopotamia. Then after his father died, God brought Abraham to this land. Then Stephen says, Abraham lived in the promised land, but he didn't receive one food of land, one fear of land from this promised land. That is what we read in book of Hebrews. These days we are studying book of Hebrews. Regarding Abraham, the writer of the Hebrews in chapter 11 says he lived in the land as a foreigner. Hallelujah. So verse 5, uh, towards the end of verse 4, God removed him from there into this land in which you are now living. As I mentioned, yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him as a possession and his offspring the portion which we read, it begins saying, verse 17, but as the time of the promise drew near. Hallelujah. What was the promise given to Abraham? While in the promised land, he didn't receive one food of land as his own, but God promised him, I will give this land to your offspring your children and listen me at that time Abraham was childless he didn't receive one food of land in the promised land but God promised him I will give this land where you live now to your children to your offspring but Abraham was a childless nomad. And we know in chapter 15 of Genesis, God appearing to Abraham saying, I am your, I am your reward. Then Abraham says, it's very sweet to hear that. But I am childless. My descendant would be my servant from Damascus. I will die this way. Then we read there that God brought 
Abraham out of the tent and ask him to look at the sky. Look at the stars on the sky and your children will be like the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. And there we read that Abraham believed and that was counted to him as righteousness. And regarding the same promise of giving a child to Abraham when he was childless, and we know that he was old, 100 years old. Regarding that, in Romans chapter 4, Paul says in verse 17, Romans chapter 4, verse 17, Paul says, Abraham believed in a God who will give life to the dead and call out of nothing. That was his God understanding. Then verse 18 onwards, with regard to the promise of giving a son to Abraham, Paul writes very elaborately, when Abraham received this promise, he did not doubt at the promise. Rather, he believed that the one who gave the promise is able to fulfill the promise. He did not waver in faith, but rather without, even after considering that he is 100 years old and he is old, in some versions we read uh, he reasoned. Understand this morning that Abraham's faith was not a blind faith. He comprehended very well, he reasoned very well that he is old and even 100 years old. And he also reasoned that, or he comprehended, he understood the barrenness of the womb of Sarah. And Paul says, upon the promise of God, not showing any distrust, understanding his conditions in human terms, he reasoned, he comprehended that he is weak. He's 100 years old. He understood very well that Sarah's womb is also barren. Still, he believed in God. Hallelujah. Why? Because he believed, Abraham believed uh, that the one who gave the promise is able to fulfill the promise. This morning as I speak on this message, understand, comprehend very well in our heart and mind that the God whom we serve is the God of promise. So as we study the Old Testament and also New Testament, we understand that God gives promise. He not only gives promise, he fulfills the promise. And bringing the same idea to the New Testament, then Paul says, whatever promises we have in Christ, those are yes. Hallelujah. Promises is an important biblical theme. When we study biblical theology, promises is an important concept. The God of the Bible is the God who gives promises. To whom? To his people. So promises are part of covenantal relationship. Understand this morning, we are the people of covenant. Promises as part of our relationship with the God. So let me repeat, Stephen was, in his sermon, in his message, Stephen was pointing out a spirituality, a faith that existed even before temple. That existed even before the law came into existence. This man, Abraham, lived in Mesopotamia. 
he was an idol worshipper but he believed in god not after his circumcision as paul says in romans 4 before his circumcision and as paul says and many other places as we read it is not after the law was given but before the law was given so understand this morning as stephen insist stephen emphasize there were people as we discuss these days heroes of faith even before the temple came into existence hallelujah that is what stephen wanted to emphasize even before the law was given on the mount of sinai there were people who trusted in god who believed in god hallelujah a spirituality that was exemplified not in the holy land but in the land of idols and god brought one man out of that land and he brought to the promised land but he didn't get one foot of land but what was existing what was prevalent the promise was prevailing hallelujah this morning as you hear this message let me tell you i want to reaffirm that a god whom we serve is the god of promise god gives promises to his people are you ready to believe his promises we have eternal promises in the bible we have eternal promises given to us in and through our lord jesus christ our lord said come to me i will give you rest follow me i will give you eternal life and our lord said i will come back and collect you all with me and our lord promise the son of man will raise the dead we have all those promises which are eternal but at the same time we have temporal promises as well the promises related to this world as we live in this world as we follow our lord as we worship our lord as the children of god god gives us promises god had given me many promises personally speaking in my childhood i have shared it i was a boy of insecure feelings inferiority feelings i feared anything and everything but through the word god promised me they were repeating promise of the bible fear not i am with you let me tell you when god gave you promises understand promise this way promise is part of our covenantal relationship with god god gives promises to his children we have eternal promises which are given in and through jesus christ but at the same time as we serve the lord god gives us specific promises god speaks to us not only word of god but through the prophets even through a song god can speak to us during my studies i still remember i had some problem with uh, my certificates and because of the lack of that documentation there was some problem with my high studies then just before one week of the examination i was attending a meeting then there came a prophet he didn't know the condition i was going through but he told me you have a problem with relation to regarding your certificates but god says i will let you to write exam hallelujah believe it this morning the god speak to us speaks to us god gives promises to us 
when we are going through desperate situations when we face struggles when we experience loneliness in our life all these situations are very true all of us or some of us experience always or all of us experience sometimes but god will give promises to us hallelujah when fear of death comes god will say god will strengthen us and we will be able to shout out like psalmist that i will not die i will live and proclaim the goodness of god god is the god who will interact with, with us when we say god is living it emphasizes the fact that god will keep on speaking to us he will interact with us he will give promises to us to strengthen us to keep us in path and to show us that he is living god hallelujah god is the god of promise he will not only give us promise he will fulfill the promise hallelujah so abraham in the promised land god brought him out of the land called mesopotamia between the land meaning of that name is the land between two rivers mesopotamus potamus means river meso mean between the land between two rivers euphrates and tigris god brought him out of that land then brought to this place the promised land but he didn't get a food of land but instead god gave him promise and he trusted not only in promise but the promise giver he understood that the one who has given me promise will fulfill it he will fulfill it that is the idea of the scripture because god cannot lie repeatedly bible says god cannot lie the one who has given promise is faithful if you experience the power of god from the bottom of hearts shall we all praise god hallelujah, hallelujah. not only gives promises but he will definitely fulfill that hallelujah with regard to a child the promise was given to abraham paul in romans 4 narrates about that and hebrews chapter 11 again we read about that not only abraham the writer of the hebrews ad sarah too hallelujah there we read uh, Sarah too, not only Abraham. Sarah's womb was barren. If Abraham was old, Sarah also was old. And moreover that her womb was barren. Impossibility. But writer of the Hebrews in chapter 11 says, not only Abraham, but Sarah too believed. And because of one, that same reason, one reason, there came offspring from a man who was almost dead he was almost 100 years old see that particular expression because of that one reason what was that one reason sarah believed and because of that one reason there came offspring out of the man of inability the man who was almost dead the man who was almost 100 years old who himself knew that he is not good for anything hallelujah let me repeat uh, this morning if you are ready to believe in the promise of god hallelujah he will fulfill that he is faithful to do that not only he is faithful he is capable to do that not only he is able to do that he not only he is faithful he is promise fulfilling god 
but understand this morning the god of the bible is el shaddai the all powerful god the all sufficient one nothing is impossible to him i reaffirm this morning i affirm this morning and we together will say amen shout out hallelujah and say that nothing 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 is impossible to him hallelujah this is not a dead faith but it is interactive faith what makes christianity different from other religions bible presents a god who is living you read genesis to revelation the god who gives promises the one who fulfill promises you read genesis to revelation the one who will speak to his people the one who will interact with his people he is transcendent and away from the earth he is not chained in the earth he is away because of his holiness he is away in heaven worthy of all worship and praise but at the same time he is very near to me very near to you the imminent god the imminent presence not only in the sanctuary but in the wilderness hallelujah never ever confine the presence of god in the sanctuary yes in a specific way in a special way the creator god our redeemer our deliverer is here in our midst at the same time we should never ever confine his presence here he is everywhere in the wilderness when we are before the red sea when we are in the wilderness just before the jordan the overflowing jordan understand his presence is there hallelujah so stephen says as we read but as the time of promise drew near there came a god gave promise to abraham saying your offspring will come to this land they will own this land they will possess this land these days we are studying about heroes of faith let me tell you not only abraham or take for example abraham abraham never thought that the plan of god will end with himself the story will end with himself but he understood that uh, since god uh, is the god of generations since god is the living god his plan will continue so that is true with all heroes of faith so that is the reason why the writer of the hebrews in chapter 11 narrates the faith or defines the faith as the hope the hope of the unseen abraham did not see what is going to happen hallelujah still he believed he understood that the plan of god will continue he understood that he is just part of the wider plan of god let me tell you this morning the story will never end with you do you believe that this story will never end with you parent since god is the god of generations the story will continue we are only part of the wider plan of god we are just a part of the wider the broad plan of god the story will continue because the god whom we serve is the god of generations generations to generation he is our lord so there came a time then the time of fulfillment of the promise came then what happened two things happened stephen says people multiplied that is both positive and negative people multiplied because god wanted to make a people not just 75 who went to egypt 
but god wanted to make a people as his own his own people then in exodus 19:6 we read uh, that you are my precious possession that was again repeated in first peter chapter 2 you are a holy nation so out of one man god wanted to make a nation they were going through struggles their identity was of the identity of slavehood they were slaves but they multiplied so in that way that is positive but in another way it was negative because they were slaves people multiplied means lot of problems connected to that so when the time of the fulfillment of the promise came stephen says people multiplied then another thing happened there came a pharaoh his name is amos there came a pharaoh who didn't know joseph who doesn't know who joseph is let me tell you with regard to that for god to do something in your life he doesn't man he doesn't need a man or woman who is influential hallelujah as we heard today or yesterday the lord is the one who can even command to the kings hallelujah you know that i was a government servant so when speaking to someone in the office i still remember that particular advice given to me so whenever you go to an office meet uh, the highest authority you can meet then the things will be done if possible so sometimes that is not possible but if possible meet the high- highest authority in that office then he will order to his subordinates and things will be done but if he, you meet a last grade servant then he himself will be arrogant and he will then go to the next level then there will be some hindrances then that man or woman will go to the next steps then there also problems will be there but instead you meet the higher authority who can give orders to his subordinates i still remember that the god whom we serve is able he is able he can he can command to the kings hallelujah today we heard that he can command to the kings so trust in god so that is the whole idea of the bible instead of trusting in human beings that is what we read in psalm 20 right some trusted in chariots it shows the power hallelujah some in kings but we trusted in god who is the creator of heaven and earth who is able to command to the kings who appoints the kings hallelujah that is a very idea of the bible god is sovereign bible utters the scripture utters the sovereignty of god bible emphasizes the fact that god is able to do anything and everything bible emphasizes that the god whom we serve is a miracle working god this particular statement from ari brown who is a new testament scholar i have repeatedly said that god of the bible he says god of the bible is the god of incredible surprises hallelujah god of the bible is the god of incredible surprises he is able to do miracles we do believe in miracles he intervenes in history he speak he interact with people he gives promises he fulfills promises he does miracles all things are possible to him hallelujah 
Stephen says when the time came near for the fulfillment of the promise two things happened people multiplied and then there came a pharaoh the king who didn't ever know joseph and he began to ill treat his people when things go you know turn into troublesome still god's promises are there for us you know the personal promises given to you still you are going through difficulties still you have not you have in attained anything promises are still there but still you are going through difficulties like promises given the anointing given to david still he is in the wilderness still he is in the forest but he has the anointing of the king one day he will become king but when based on this portion let me tell you when we are even after the promises are given we have our own promises given by god but still we are going through difficulties the difficulties are increased you cannot bear it understand that now this is the time for the fulfillment of the promise hallelujah the israelites had to face the difficulties there came a king who didn't know joseph who joseph was and the pharaoh began to ill treat them then stephen says this is the time of the fulfillment of god's promise then what happened stephen says then moses was born this is the beginning of a new story this is the beginning of the story of deliverance of god this is the beginning of the exodus coming out of egypt moses was born and there we read that he was divinely handsome moses was divinely handsome and where he grew up is in the promise was in the promised land no he grew up in egypt in the palace of pharaoh as a son of pharaoh's daughter or the title we can say the prince of egypt i'm just going to wind up my sermon here so again stephen wanted to emphasize that the deliverer so the allegation against uh, stephen was he spoke against moses the lawgiver he spoke against the temple and i told you at the beginning that stephen wanted to emphasize that there were people who trusted in god who believed in god even before the temple came into existence abraham was brought out of mesopotamia the land of idols then again by narrating the story of moses we see a big narration the largest narration in this chapter that is regarding moses three stages of moses life 40 years in the palace 40 years tending the sheep 40 years in the wilderness the whole story is depicted in chapter 7 and beginning with moses there also stephen wanted to emphasize that moses the deliverer the moses the lawgiver he grew up in egypt pharaoh's palace hallelujah this is god's plan this is god's way of doing as i wind up my message here understand this way god's plan is perfect we are just part of his wider plan his broader plan if he has given us promise he will fulfill that if he has given you promise he will fulfill that because he is not only the promise giver 
but he is the fulfiller of the promise he can call out of mesopotamia the land of idols he can make uh, the deliverer of israelites grow in the palace of pharaoh hallelujah shall we once again praise god hallelujah